Here we go, algebra. Let's do lesson 33, and we'll begin with products of prime factors. Join me on page 134. Products of prime factors. Now, let's recall that when we multiply two numbers, like say 3 and 2, which both have a prime, we get a number 6, which is called a composite number because it's made up of two other numbers. We can't really count one in itself as the two numbers made up with because that's just what it is. So a composite number, composite numbers are numbers that are made up of um, numbers that are besides one in itself. Okay, now when we talk about prime numbers, we're like say the number 17, we're talking about 17, and that's only really made of 17 and 1. So you still get 17. That's all it is. That's why that is a prime number. If we want to compose 3, 11, or 23, a factor of those is also going to be 1 in itself. And of course, that's called prime numbers. So the definition of a prime number is this. A prime number is a counting number greater than 1. So greater than 1, counting number greater than 1, whose only whose only counting number factors are 1 in itself. Okay, that's the real definition of a prime number. Anything else, we're talking about a composite number, which is making up of more than just those. So we could do something, now this is kind of stuff that you've already done. Let's take 80 and compose 80, because 80 is a composite number, let's compose 80 of prime factors. And you can do that lots of ways. If we do 80 divided by 2, we end up with 40. Still not a prime number. We can divide 40 by 2 again to get 20. Divide 20 by 2, you get 10. And 10 divided by 2, you get 5. And we got all of the prime numbers, prime numbers fact, factors down. So we got four twos, and we got a 5, which is 2 to the 4th times 5. Pretty simple. We could do the same thing with another number, like 147. You're like, well, how do you know what that is? Well, 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 7 is 12, and 12 is divisible by 3. So let's divide 147 by 3, and we get 49. And we can do 49 by 7, and we get 7. So those numbers are 3, 7, and 7. Okay, we can check that by actually multiplying them. So a review of prime numbers. Now what about statements about unequal quantities? We've been working with statements for the last couple of lessons. So um, we're going to continue with that. And there's some important notes before we begin. Quantities, yes, yeah, spell today. Often a word problem makes a statement about quantities that differ by a specified amount. Thus, the statement tells us that the quantities are not equal, and our task is to write an equation about the quantities that are equal. To perform this task, we must add as required so that both sides of the equation represent equal quantities. All right, so if we had the equation that looks like this, twice a number is 42 less than negative 102. Find the number. What is that number? We get first we be very careful because um, we can't we cannot do 2n equals negative 102 like we've been doing because we got 42 less than. So this is a no-no. So we gotta be careful when we do that. So let's look at this carefully. We do have twice a number, so we want to write 2n. 2n is less is 42 less than negative 102. So what do we have to do with 42 less than? We have to decide is 42 less than going to be a positive number or a negative number? Well, think logically on this problem. This is 42 is less than, or sorry, twice the number is 42 less than. So it means it's this number 2n plus 42 is what really is going to garner our solution. So we're going to subtract 42 from both sides. 
So I get 2n equals negative 144. I would divide by 2 on both sides to get n equals negative 72. Okay, and what that means is that we want to check our work. And when I check my work, if I plug negative 72 into here, I better end up negative 72 times 2 plus 42, I better end up with negative 102, which I will do. So make sure that you are checking all of your work. Let's try a few more. If the sum, the sum of twice a number and negative 14 is multiplied by 2, the result is 12 greater than the opposite of the number. Than the opposite of the number. Okay, so take a look at that carefully. Again, we want to write an expression that is correct. The sum of twice a number and negative 14, 2n minus 14 is multiplied by 2. So it's two things going on, so multiply that by 2. The result is 12 greater than the opposite of the number. So this number is 12 more than the opposite of the number. So that's the opposite of the number. So this one's 12 more, so I'm going to write minus 12. So if I'm 12 more, why would I put down minus 12? Well, I need to put down minus 12 because this statement is telling us that this part is 12 more than this, and I need to find out what n is. So if it's 12 more than the opposite of n, then I have to subtract 12. So when you see more, you're actually going to write subtract because we're, our key is finding out what the heck that is. So let's do that. When I do my distributive property, I get 4n minus 28 minus 12 equals negative n. And I, I'm going to combine like terms, and I'm going to also um, move my variables to one side. I'm going to do that in fast fashion. So I get 5n equals 40. And I skip those steps because we've been working on those for a long time. And then when I solve it, I find out that n equals 8. Well, if I want to be sure that I did this right, then I'm going to put 2 times 2 times 8 minus 14 minus 12 equals negative 8. Okay, so let's find out if that happens. 2 times 16 minus 14 is 12. So 2 times 2 is 4 minus 12. Ah, oh, look what I got. I got negative 8 equals negative 8. And I know for sure I got my problem right. Let's do one more. 5 times a number is 21 less than twice the opposite of the number. What is a number? Okay, so that's 5 times a number, so that's 5n is 21 less than the opposite of the number. Okay, now let's take a look at that. Okay, we want to make sure 5 times a number is 21 less than twice the opposite of the number. So again, twice the opposite of the number. Okay, right there. So is it going to be plus 21 or minus 21? Well, this number is less than this number is less than this number. So to make sure I'm doing that right, I need to be adding 21. So really when you translate this, if you can kind of see, so far we've always had to do the opposite of what the word is, so we're actually adding because this side is supposed to be smaller than this side, so now we got to add 21 to that. And when I do my math for that problem, I get 2n minus 21 over here. Oh, sorry, well, I, don't know. I messed that up because I was not thinking right. 
So when I do that over here, I get 5n plus 21 equals negative 2n. Okay, and then I want to do my work, so I'm going to add 2n, I'm going to subtract 21, so I'm going to get 7n equals negative 21. And when I'm done, I get n equals negative 3. So that's our statements with inequalities.